All right, ladies and gentlemen, my name is Joshua T. Berglund. Thank you guys so much uh, for being here today. Um, I have had a blast the last two weeks. It was a lot of fun getting to do this at the Better Business Bureau and speaking uh, in front of the people that showed up. Um, but all of you who have attended the webinars virtually, thank you all of your questions, your encouragement, uh, your engagement. Uh, is very inspiring. It's very exciting. Um, we spent a lot of time last week talking about Web3 and mentioned some virtual worlds. I want to throw out, before we get started, I want to throw out some that you should look at and consider looking at, especially if you're looking for new ways of exposing your content, finding new people, finding new audiences, finding new revenue streams. And we're going to get into revenue streams today um, and some other things, but today won't be as long. Um, so I'm. this is set up for you to be able to ask more questions towards the end. I probably won't answer questions immediately, um, but I will go back through and answer them. But check out pavio.io. Uh, it's P-A-V-I-A dot I-O. Also look up Sandbox, uh, sandbox.game, and then Spatial, S-P-A-T-I-A-L. They're great platforms to check out. Um, also, we're going to talk about book publishing a little bit today, too, in a different way than we have before. Um, I'm really excited. I've done some different things with my books and are in the process of doing more thing, different things with my books that really align more with my belief of self-hosting, uh, you know, not giving away all of my intellectual property, not working for 10% of my value like I would be if I was, you know, as a, someone that's monetized on YouTube, it's like, it's, it's, it's shocking how little you get paid for your content, unless if you're one of those people that have the giant endorsement deals. So this happens with books also, and there's some great self-publishing platforms, but there's a, I believe a better way uh, overall to, to get your books out there and even your written content. It doesn't have to be a book. And we're going to get into that in the end also. So I prepared an opening statement. Uh, so bear with me as I read. But I want to set the tone uh, for what this is all about, the heart behind it, the why behind it. And then also hopefully open up your eyes to even more possibilities. Good day, everyone. I am absolutely thrilled to be here with you all today, surrounded by so many incredible entrepreneurs virtually and visionaries. This virtual room is brimming with potential and possibility. And I mean that sincerely because I've met with several of you independently. Um, we've gone over this material and I wanna say that I love your excitement and enthusiasm for this. So this is not a, a fluff line trying to butter you up. Before we get started, I want to express my immense gratitude to the amazing people at SCORE. Their tireless work supporting and guiding entrepreneurs like yourselves is invaluable. We quite simply couldn't do what we do without partners like them in our corner. I know for a fact that I couldn't do what I do without SCORE, and I'm extremely grateful for them. The, now let's talk about why we're really here. We are living through revolutionary times, my friends. The fourth industrial level the fourth industrial revolution is upon us, bringing with it incredible technological advances that are fundamentally reshaping our world. But this revolution is about so much more than amazing new tools and capabilities. It's about the human potential these innovations have unlocked. Opportunities that were once mere fantasies are now realizable. Dreams that felt impossible can now be manifested into reality with little with a little ingenuity and perseverance. And what could be more human, more fundamental, than the desire to take control of our own narrative, to share our authentic voices and stories with the world? That is the incredible potential of independent media. No longer are we beholden to, to, to traditional industry gatekeepers. We can build our own media enterprises, cultivate direct relationships with loyal audiences, and shape the messages and perspectives that rise above the noise. 
And here's what really sets my soul on fire. We can do this together as families, passing down generational knowledge and skills, collaborating on creative visions, building legacies of empowerment rooted in shared values. There is no greater gift we can give our children than the ability to courageously author their own life stories. The playing field is wide open thanks to powerful technological advances like AI, blockchain, advanced data, data analytics, and more. Tools that seem like sci-fi fantasies just years ago are now viable paths to create personalized content experiences, monetize through innovative models, and reach a global audience. So to those who feel stuck, worried about an insecure future, or simply unfulfilled, today is a symbol of boundless hope, a chance to claim your independence and write your own destiny, hand in hand with your loved ones. Yes, there will be challenges along the way, and we'll talk through distinguishing your voice in a saturated landscape and overcoming technological barriers. But nothing worthwhile was ever won without a struggle. I firmly believe that each of you has a unique perspective to share with the world, and I can't wait to explore the strategies and possibilities for bringing those visions to vivid life through the power of independent media. This is not just about business. It's about taking ownership of your legacy and identity. It's about creating something you can be proud of alongside the people you cherish most. So let's dive in, embrace the future, and craft the narratives that will inspire generations to come. All right, now let's get into this. Thank you all again for being here. <clears throat> okay, I need you all to tell me if you see a spinning record on the screen. <laughs> I can see it on my end, but not yours. Can you all see this? Cottrell, raise your hand, okay. Um, let's see. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Jose. Good to see you, brother. Thank you for being here. Another person. I love, I love what Jose is doing too. And by the way, I want to encourage you all, you all network with each other. Um, you like you guys, I, I want to encourage you because I can tell you firsthand that all of the people that I can see on my screen right now are people that sincerely care about other people. And they want to make a difference in the world. So collaborate. Tons of awesome, awesome human beings that I can see on my screen. So I want to encourage you guys to network with each other and get to know each other. All right. <clears throat> get rid of this. So like always, the last few weeks, I've changed up the presentation a lot. Uh, <laughs> I get fickle and I want to change things. But today, we're going to have some fun. I'm really, really excited about this. So we're going to get into some more independent media talk. Uh, we're going to talk about core purpose and values, how that is essential for establishing a creative, independent media venture. Because here's the thing. If you're, if you're looking to have your voice heard and you're looking to make a difference in your community, the only way you're really going to be able to do it in a way that you feel led and with freedom is going independent. Because if you join a network or you go to YouTube or you go join E360 TV or you join some other platform or someone else's network, you are beholden to what they want you to do. If you go pay somebody like, hey, I want to be on your channel and I want to be a part of your network and they're promising you, hey, we're going to promote you. We're going to market you. We're going to do all that. I want to make this clear. Odds are they're not going to let you have the freedom to create exactly the way that you want to create. They're going to want you to create in a way that makes their network look good and helps them bring in more revenue. So I know it's very tempting to go join other people's networks, but honestly, for the money that you would spend doing so, you might as well build it your own platform. I want to get into the importance of media literacy. We're going to highlight the role of media liter literacy in fostering critical thinking and responsible consumption of information, but more. Building your own media company, we're going to go over that again, but in a different way. 
um, because I want to explain it different, hoping to get more of you to take action. And most of you, just to be clear, you don't have to buy any extra tools. You could use your, most of you could use your existing website to build your own media company. I, I, I don't know what all web platforms you're using, but most of you could. We're going to get into tools and platforms a little bit more in a different way. And we're going to talk about different monetization opportunities. Some of them will sound the same, but there's going to be some new ones too, because I've even done some different stuff in the last week. I talked about it, but now I actually did it because I found the right software to do it with. So I'm super excited. All right. Introduction to independent media. So I purposely chose this photo for a reason. Because when people think about independent media or they people think about media, they think of giant, if you've ever been in Los Angeles, you'll see the giant CNN tower. You'll see, you know, been in New York, you'll see all of these giant media towers. You'll, I mean, and when we think, a lot of people think media, they think ABC, they think ESPN, they think CNN, Fox, whatever it may be, um, you know, I'm going to keep my personal comments to myself. Anyway, sometimes hard to do. Um, but independent media is, look, you're starting grassroots. You you may not have the budget to throw at everything you want to do. I, I mean, I got to be honest with you all. The only time I've ever had a big budget to work with on any of my projects is when I was hired to go work with a different organization that had big money. Um, so the larger productions that I've been a part of and I've been able to do or produce uh, events or movies or whatever, I was invited in to be a part of that. But my own stuff, I, listen, less is I, I, I do the best with what I can. I If Jessica pops on here, she can tell you that when we were trying different ways of making our set design look different, we were using video green screens, trying everything possible most of the equipment we got was from thrift stores, secondhand. Sometimes it was stacking up boxes so I could stand up to broadcast. But since I didn't have a standing desk or didn't want to pay, you know, use $3,000 to buy one, I, we stack boxes. Like you did, or you find a spotlight or you find whatever you can, but you just do the best you can with what you have. But you don't sweat humble beginnings. Don't sweat the small stuff. Don't. If this room that you're looking at here is like the best broadcasting room that you can create or be in, so what? Because in the end, it's really not about how it looks. I mean, yes, you do the best you can, but if you are speaking from your heart and you're sharing something of value, you don't need to worry about what you don't have. Focus on what you do have and do the best you can with it. I believe being a good steward of what you have and showing that you're not going to focus on the crap you don't have, but you're going to be grateful for what you do have. I believe you'll be rewarded for that. I'll be re you'll be rewarded for that. So don't sweat it. Don't get frustrated. But the good news for you is now the editing software is so easy to use. Everything's so inexpensive. You can make your set or wherever you're broadcasting or recording videos you can make it look like anything you want now. So you don't have to spend a lot of money <clears throat> on set design or even equipment. It, it's shocking, but I wanted to show this video because it, or this picture because it reminded me of all the things that I had to do um, <laughs> to make it look like I had a studio. And, uh, you know, and then there's when I actually got to broadcast in a studio, truth be told, I kind of missed my little laptop and microphone, but that's a whole other conversation. All right. So the definition and importance of independent media. Um, let me get my picture out of the way. Can't see anything here. Independent media operates beyond mainstream outlets. So a lot of people, again, look to HBO, CNN, ABC, and like they look at that as media. And so, and then I, I want a media job and you go apply at those networks and you try to get your foot in the door so that you can start, maybe start from the bottom and work your way to the top. Maybe that's a goal. Maybe that's a real thing for you. Or you just go try to get a job by one of these organizations. You, they, remember, there's a handful of people that own 
the few media companies in this world. Like, I mean, they own most of everything. That's starting to change as more people step into independent media. But independent media functions outside of the boundaries of traditional mainstream media platforms. So that means you can self-host. You don't need to get on HBO to get your movie seen. You can use Maestro. You can use Muse. You can use E360 TV. You can use all of these other platforms to, to host your content. You don't have to follow the traditional measures that other people did. You can do it yourself. Or you can just... Again, you can host directly on your own platform, put it behind a paywall, and a lot of the platforms we will talk about and have talked about will offer this for you where you can have your own movies. In fact, you can build a whole community. You can go to Maestro with your movie, put your movie into Maestro, and you can have, I mean, you can build your community right there on that platform, this immersive media platform. And yes, it is self-hosting because all you're really doing is leasing the hardware and so you have the freedom to show your film, your concert, your event, whatever it may be in the way that you feel led without having to worry about social media and other things, especially if you're covering some topics that are a little bit harder. Um, well, let's just say that go against what the masses would want you to talk about. So supports underrepresented communities. I this for me is everything about independent media is is what it comes down to is that if you're part of the underserved, if you're part of the minority, if you're part of the the group that your voice is silenced. I mean, this could be for I mean, think about what women uh, have gone through and that's starting to change because more female voices are starting to be heard. But what about minorities? What about people of other categories that you know, when they speak up or the media gets behind and starts promoting some of those agendas, you know, it's what happens is when something's well-funded and they're getting this information or they're pushing this information out to the world to see, you know, I don't look at a well-funded agenda as being something that's really organic and natural, I believe. And we're going to get into this in the media literacy talk, but when it's a, when it's well-funded, Odds are it's not really an independent true voice. Some people that have the money to make these decisions and put the money behind those projects to drown out other voices, it's by design because there's an agenda at play. I'm not going conspiracy here. I'm just saying that typically if it's a well-funded, <laughs> well-marketed campaign, eh, there may be some sinister money behind it. Just saying. But at the same time, independent media it gives people an opportunity to share their truth without being silenced. Now, is it harder and more competitive to get your voices heard? Yes, but that's why it might be the best approach and whatever your desire in independent media is, is to focus on your community, focus on things that personally that you've gone through and overcome things that battles that maybe you've lost and you're trying to find a way. Well, you know what? I've said before, truth will attract your tribe. And that's true. And sometimes your truth is, I'm not okay. I'm not okay. I'm, I'm I, you know, I'm really struggling with this. I mean, there's something really beautiful about being able to do that. And some people would say that they're embarrassed but in my experience, sharing a journey and where I'm at with a journey has always paid off. And again, this is not about being a victim mentality. It's about sharing factual truth that you experience. And your life experience is the ultimate truth, really. But again, it gives voices. Like One of the underrepresented communities that I care a lot about um, are immigrants i'm not and listen i'm not making a comment about the border i'm not i'm not talking about that i'm talking about people who immigrate to america and that is a that is a battle and one of the things that i learned getting to work with one of the underserved groups here in minnesota or in, i'm not in minnesota right now but in minnesota um was that and i never thought about this before but there's doctors and you know, there's surgeons, attorneys, and teachers, and 
you know, really highly educated people from other countries that come to America for freedom. And, but one of the things that they lose when they come over here is relationship capital. In other words, you know, people say you're, what is it, what, what is it about the five people closest to you? Like, and you never want to be the smartest person in the room. And well, all of those expressions are are true. And, and I know that we have a global marketplace now, but when you're trying to serve in communities, when you're from the outside, it's hard. Like people don't just invite you in. In my experience in Minnesota, every place I've ever shown up, I'm like, hey, I want to serve. Like whether it was church or nonprofit organizations, I'm like, hey, we're, we're here to help. We've got where we want to teach. And like, it's, it's shocking how hard it is to be able to get in and serve in a capacity that you're able to serve. That's rough. And I'm American. So what would it be like for an immigrant who is not from here, doesn't necessarily speak the language or their accent still really heavy? It's going to be really, really hard to get integrated into the community to be able to serve. It's just tough. So when you don't get those opportunities, but your heart is longing to serve and you want to make a difference, sometimes I don't. you may not have the patience to wait on people to invite you in. So you got to build your own platform and start talking about the things that you care about. So you don't need a permission slip for that. I don't need the church to say, yeah, you've gone through all of our steps now, and we, we think that you're truly a man of God. So now we're going to let you come serve in the capacity that you're most gifted. And I, I don't mean to single out church here at all, because it, because it's a lot of other nonprofit organizations. Like we get really culty when it comes to our organizations, where it's like, well, if you don't adhere to what we want, uh, we're not going to let you, you know, be involved. But guess what? That's their right to do that. But at the same time, we also turn away a lot of people that are very worthy and actually would be appropriate partners to help us. We turn them away for whatever reason. But at the same time, instead of crying over spilled milk, there's an opportunity to go take action yourself and then let those organizations see that you're for real. And after they see that you're for real, then they'll let you come talk, let you come serve and so on. At least that's been my experience. All right. Diversity and vibrancy uh, in information landscape. So this is crucial for, uh, for fostering a rich and varied information ecosystem by introducing multiple viewpoints and topics. Listen, I don't, it's not for me, one of the most insulting things ever. And I don't know if this is later in my presentation or not, but I've had, I had a skincare line and then I represented another skincare line and we created other skincare lines for people. I got to tell you something when I was in the business um, and it's been, it's been about seven years, I guess, since I was directly in the skincare business and thank goodness it's changed. But one of the most nauseating, frustrating things ever um, were all of the cosmetic in skincare companies only marketing to white people or, you know, white skinned, light skinned people, because they could have been European, they could have been Dutch, could have been Swedish, uh, could have been from the UK, but they weren't representing people with darker skin tones. People that were Indian, people from Africa, people from the Middle East, like people from Asia. Like it's not, unless if it was a Korean skincare brand or, you know, that they, but it was very, very white people focused, light skin focused. But the reality was that not all of our skin looks like that. And, and that's not what the rest of the world looks like. But yet we were marketing to them on TV commercials and so on. And the other thing, too, about marketing, not everyone's skinny and ripped. Not everyone has a six pack and 24 inch pythons and all those other things. Not everyone has that. So marketing at the time, it was just catering to super skinny, super fit white people. And th th that was insulting to me. And I never understood why brands didn't go, well, listen, if your product is made for other people with different skin tones, why not show it? I know I'm using marketing now, but that's information. Like to educate, like people assume that African-Americans or people from Africa don't get melanoma. Well, that's actually not true. Um, so we, like the way that information is distributed and the way that topics are discussed, like for so long, 
It's just going with the main narratives and whatever agenda is need needing to be put forward. But the issues that really needed to be discussed, the issues that would make us feel whole again, issues that would make us feel heard, make us feel like we're a part of something, those aren't talked about if underrepresented voices are silenced. So independent media is this vehicle for not just your own voice getting out, but also for you to push, not uh, to push the narratives that are true for you, yes, and what you're experiencing in your own life, but then also focusing on things like you may not be a white person and your hair may not be straight or gray or bald or oily, and you have another thing to talk about. I know I'm kind of all over the place with this, but uh, hopefully you're getting what I'm what I'm saying with this. Like this is an opportunity for you to offer solutions instead of focusing on problems. And yes, we need to talk about problems and we need to point out the things that are happening in our community. But at the same time, um, <clears throat> sorry, we can point those things out, but I think now is the time to not just point out the problems in life, but to also offer the solutions or at least some strategic steps forward. Because by doing that, we can start to meet people halfway. Because if we're just talking about the problem, we are part of the problem. So if we're that's all we want to do, we shouldn't talk. The opportunity that we have with independent media is to say, here's the problem, here's a solution, or here's a, a perspective solution that we could look at, and maybe little by little, we can start moving forward or moving towards unity, common goal, and a desire to make the world a better place together. Anyway. All right. The benefits of independent media. So diverse viewpoints and voices, uh, multiple perspectives on complex subjects, specialized subjects, things that we wouldn't know about. It's important. I, I like there's just it's it's amazing how much we really don't know. Like most of the information that's shared is regurgitated opinions that we've seen on TV, a show, heard on a podcast, but not much of it is our own truth. And in some of our own truths are some really hard things. Like and I and I don't want to I don't want to take this into a, a sour direction, but those of you who have suffered with abuse of any kind, and the impact that that abuse has had on you, or having an alcoholic parent, or um, you know, growing up with a, 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 a in a home that you know the the one of the 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 part the one of the parents were were serial cheaters or. I mean, there's just all of these tragic things and there's things that happen in the community and, and, and like wherever you're from and wherever you're at, it gives you a different perspective. And those things need to be heard because the more complex subjects that we can address honestly, the more likely we are to get solutions. But if we can't, if we're not sharing those complex situations, looking for a solution, we're never going to find it. What is it? Seek until you find? Anyway. Uh, editorial freedom and self-expression. Some people don't care about that. Some people don't care about saying what you want to say or, you know, creating the way you feel led. I, I I get that. But for me, somebody that was silenced, somebody that had my voice taken when I was young, this matters to me. Being heard, because I remember what it was like crying out for help as a kid and not and not being heard it's it you know and i mean that affects you that affects all of us when we are not heard we all want to be heard i think we all want to be appreciated and one thing about the truth is i said truth will attract your tribe well who do you think your tribe is your tribe aligns with your message your tribe aligns with your vision and if you stand in your truth not only will people come to you, but you're establishing who you are as a person 
and you're showing why people should follow you, why people should support you, why people should buy your books. But you're, and they're getting to know you for who you really are, all sides of it. And again, having that freedom allows you. Like, I think we're all visionaries and we're all creatives and we all get these downloads of what we can do. How many of you have ever, how many of you have ever said, well, you know, I don't get paid to do that. I don't get, you know, or I, um, I apologize if you can hear the lawnmower in the back. I wasn't expecting that to happen, but I'm. <laughs> uh, making me vibrate inside too. Gosh, darn it. <clears throat> okay. I apologize for that. <laughs> anyway. All right. So innovation and storytelling formats. The other thing about independent media is it gives you. So have you ever noticed how um, South Park and um, the Simpsons that they could say things that humans couldn't say on TV? Like they could talk about issues that you're like, if that was a human being saying that they would have shut down that TV network five minutes ago. Yeah. Well, you know, sometimes to get a painful message out, maybe maybe having a human being tell your story for you maybe you just have it turn into a cartoon and i'm just throwing that out as an example of an innovative way to get your story out tell your story through a comic book tell it you know you can create a b-roll movie around your your story if you wanted to but you could also create experiences virtually um there's so many innovative ways to tell your story. And one of the ways that I'm going to show you later is a way that you can have your interactive, immersive book on your own platform that if, when you write a book, that's a, that in, a, immersive, interactive books are quite, um, it's quite innovative in the way that they tells the story. And on top of that, there's so many benefits to hosting a book on your website with people reading and I'm sure you can assume what they are, but we'll get into that later. All right. Look, you can use independent media to become like, I mean, you can you you, you could do that to, to sell skincare. You could do it to sell cosmetics. You could do it for anything, like any existing business that you're in. If you have a solar company, if you have a nonprofit organization that helps the underserved, well, independent media is a vehicle for you because one, what do you need to do as a nonprofit? You need to raise money, but also you need to be actively helping and serving people. How are you going to show that to the world? How are you able to show the work that you're doing for others? You do it through media. And yes, it's great to put stuff on social media, but there's really another level to this where you can become the media. So instead of having to pay for a commercial asking for money, you create your own commercial. You create your own podcast. You write your own book about your mission. And, and as, easy it is, as easy as it is to write a book, no one should not have a book. It's easier than it's ever been. Way easier. And then the fact is, I, I you think that that would shut down the value or the appreciation of books. But to this day, a book will get you in the door faster than most things. It's back. You, you say you have a podcast. Great. You compare that to, I wrote a book. I published a book. My book got published. It's going to far outweigh your podcast every time. I don't know why, because the podcast takes more work in my, in my opinion, but authors are, are just very well respected and it is a great way of getting your message out there and it's also a great way of defining your purpose and your your vision and your mission for the rest of the world to see okay i didn't choose these people on the screen by the way so i'm not making any political statements at all <laughs> and i know abraham lincoln was a president but he was also a lawyer when he wrote this quote so anyway but 
I don't remember Hillary Clinton ever saying this, but what we have to do is find a way to celebrate our diversity and debate our differences without fracturing our communities. Well, from my perspective, communities are fractured right now. Not just communities in real life, but even digital online communities. These giant podcast groups and a lot of the influencers that we've seen on social media, regardless of your political affiliation, there's infighting with those groups. There's professional wrestling infighting. And I know that they fight in professional wrestling, even though it's kind of fake, but kind of real. But I mean, even like behind the scenes stuff, you have actors fighting, going at war. Um, like every, it, it, this is, I mean, it's a sign of the times, I guess. But everybody's at war with each other for various reasons. And I think we're desperate for authenticity. We're desperate for truth. And someone has to step up and start doing that. And I believe our marginalized, our underserved, our voiceless, our disabled communities, like their voices need to be heard because the truth is, I worked with complex disabilities for 18 years, ALS, muscular dystrophy, cerebral palsy, and so on. I was in that business for 18 years. I still love it. I'm still passionate about fighting for the disabled, even though I and that's even now, even even now that I'm part of that community officially, I I I'm passionate about fighting for them. But the truth is, me speaking for somebody that's a quadriplegic, I mean, it may be effective a little bit, but there's nothing more effective than that quadriplegic speaking for themselves. Let their voice be heard. We have these leaders that pretend to be, you know, that looking out for the best interest of minorities and in, in marginalized communities, but they're speaking for them instead of elevating the voice of the person they're speaking for. It's like, hey, shut up. I got this. I got this. But but I don't want to be called handicapped. I don't want to be called disabled. Shut up. Let me talk for you. I, I, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get more money from Congress. Shh, you shut up. The people that are speaking for you, using your voice for you, are not helping you. They're not empowering you. They're not getting you where you want to go. This is why independent media matters and not letting politicians speak for you. Speak for yourself. But Steve Jobs here said, your time is limited. Don't waste it living someone else's life. Did you choose the job that you wanted? Are you working the dream job you have? Is that job serving you? Is that job what you really want in life? Is that job going to love you back? Is this job, is it going to be there in a year or two? Are all the sacrifices that you've made for someone else, are they going to be appreciated and are they going to have your back when the world changes? I don't know. Maybe, maybe they will. But I know right now that if I'm sitting around thinking I'm miserable, this is not going anywhere, I resent going to work every day, I resent going to that job, I resent you know, having to create the way I'm being told to create. That resentment, who's the resentment serving? Definitely not you. Oh, huh. it's better to keep your mouth closed and let people think you are a fool. <laughs> Then to open it and remove all doubt. So I want to speak on this really quick. And this ties into media literacy. Um, we've all been victim, I think, of fake news and uh, memes that have been digitally altered to make us believe certain things and see, you know, records and reports and special, you know, hidden investigation stuff that gets leaked. Like the truth is that we have no idea if it's real or not. No idea. No idea. Deep fake technology, deep fake meaning that you think that, I mean, I could be wearing a deep fake mask. I could actually be a woman and you may not know. That's how good the technology is. And it's been around for a long time. And so what I'm what I'm getting at is I don't want to encourage people to just go out and say everything and everything that they want because it will cost you. I've suffered great consequences 
for some of the things that I've said on camera while recording, being kicked off of YouTube three times, Twitter, Facebook, and all that multiple, even, even Apple TV and Roku, for the things that I wanted to take a stand about. Now, some of them I don't regret, others I do, because I wish I, what good did it really do me talking about those things? So when I tell you that, let's focus on sharing your truth as far as the things that you can prove, the things that you know absolutely, which you're, tie into your gifts, talents, and intellectual property, if you ask me. But like, if you focus on that, that's real. That's authentic. That's not repeating what's already been said on the news. And I got to tell you something. If you want your independent media career to take off, if you want it to take off, then only share what's true, that you know is true. Because that's what we need. You don't. We don't need more people talking about the same stupid issues over and over and over again. Because ultimately, you're just going to make people run from you. I know from experience. Had I known that discussing, and I'm. I don't regret talking about the forms of slavery I exposed, but that were hiding in front of people's face. Like I'll go down swinging about those things uh, and we'll never regret that. I'll never re be re regret any of that. But some of my opinions that I shared, they didn't really do any good. I mean, sure, for my echo chamber, loved it. Oh, you're a hero. You're so brave. You shared the truth. Wow, you go get him. You go get him with your truth, big guy. All it did was cost me a lot. And I don't recommend that for anybody, especially if you want people to hear your message. People won't hear your message if you're sharing opinions because your opinions aren't yours. Your message is yours. Anyway, don't need to go on. The importance of media literacy. What is media literacy? I have two definitions. This is one definition. I'll give you mine right after this. Understanding the importance of media literacy in today's digital age. One, the ability to critically assess media information. Media literacy involves evaluating and analyzing media content to discern its credibility, biases, and potential impact on individuals and society. It's a, it's like, it's a, it's mental warfare trying to figure out what's true and what's not. I just saw something two days ago about Le on Google News, mind you, that LeBron James is going to the Oklahoma City Thunder. Could it happen? Sure, but this article made it sound like the deal was done. That that that's on Google News. I know this is a weird example, but. It's not true. There's not a real rumor about that. Like someone or AI wrote an article to do that because, well, LeBron James coming to moving to Oklahoma after living in a $75 million house in LA. I mean, that's kind of shocking. And I'm in Oklahoma right now. And by the way, it's a beautiful place. Um, it's grown up so much since I left here years ago, but it's not Los Angeles. So, I mean, anyway, like I know that's a horrible example. <laughs> It's just the one that came to my mind, but you just don't know. So what you have to do, and we're going to get into some of this to how to identify, but I mean, you have to look at, look at every corner of the web page. Does it say anywhere that this is a, what do you call it? A spam or a spoof website? Or, um, I mean, you have to look for that or it, it just, and look at some of the art, other articles. And oh, by the way, one way to tell is if you see a bunch of news ads for, really inappropriate things at the bottom of the page, like little ads. Probably not a real website, just letting you know. Anyway. Oh, and there's tools too that you can plug in the website where you can find out who the owner is of the website. You can track IP addresses. You can find out who hosts the domain. You, I mean, literally you can find out all kinds of information um, online now. It's, it's, it's terrific. In, in fact, there's a platform called Entire Web that will help you find out who's behind the website. Pretty, pretty cool tool, but there's other ones available too. Number two, essential for navigating the digital landscape. In a world saturated with information, 
Media literacy is crucial for individuals to navigate the vast digital landscape, distinguish between reliable and misleading sources, and make informed decisions. Again, you kind of have to look at the whole body of work, uh, especially if you're going to websites and you even like if you're on your news aggregator sites like Google News, Bing News, there's a ton of fake news in there. And there's also a lot of fake news that that are not on main sites like that. Like you have to be careful and really take time. If you if you're wanting to trust the source, look for verifiable proof. In fact, one of the things that you can do, I mean, I do this with AI a lot or with the chatbot, is I'll plug in that information and I'll ask for um not relevant sources. Well, yeah, relevant sources, supporting documentation and other things to help me figure it out. But the other part is I look for different perspectives and different opinions if I'm trying to decipher whether something's true or not. And then just ask myself, well, what, what, what's right for me? But instead of seeing a headline and going, oh, my God, that's true. Now I'm going to go post about it, that LeBron James is going to the Oklahoma City Thunder without really actually taking the time to look into who was in that website. Again, that is a minor, minor example. I can give other examples, but I'm afraid I won't be invited back for course four. And I would like to get, do course four. Anyway, um, number three, enables informed decision-making. By honing media literacy skills, individuals can make informed decisions, form educated opinions, and actively engage with media content while being aware of its influence. And here's another way to look at it. I was in church on Sunday. And one of the things that I, I I heard was like, look, I'm gonna be I'm just gonna be straight up with you. I I've been obsessed with end times prophecy my whole life. Like ever ever since I saw the Terminator. Like even before I even really, you know, really knew who God was, or I not that I know who God is, but I'm just I'm saying like before I like all those things. Like I was obsessed with prophecy it was interesting to me, like the end times, the future world, how I fell into what I'm doing now all kind of stem from that. And Daniel 2, where it talks about iron and clay and man merging with machine, like I've always been kind of drawn and obsessed to this in a very unhealthy way until the education and the ability for me to be able to learn and learn for myself and really be able to, you know, look into these things that I'm being told to research myself, to apply it myself, and then realize that a lot of my fears were really just silly. Some are real, but most of them are silly. And so um, what I'm getting at is that With all the things that we believe are true, the things that we know are true, the things that align with maybe prophetical views that we that we believe in, all that may be so true to us, right? But the real question is, do I have the power to control any of it? Like if AI was really going to enslave us, and take away our freedom and we're going to be locked down by a skynet or starlink skynet and that's going to you know cover the whole earth and it's going to create a prison planet and like all i mean again and we're going to have the mark of the beast and to get in smart cities we're going to have to have a chip and everything we're going to do is going to be monitored and we're going to be under video surveillance and all like you can go down that rabbit hole absolutely and i could focus on that and i'm like what am i going to do about it i can't what can i do about it Am I, can I stop it? Am I going to go pull the plug of AI? No, I can't do that. So the reason I'm teaching this information is this. I don't know what's going to happen in the future. I have no idea. But I do know that these changes are have either happened, happening, and will happen. And I want to be prepared for them so that, say, the world doesn't end say that AI doesn't enslave me and say that AI actually really does provide opportunities for the marginalized and people who have 
been not taken care of and it, help, it helps the disabled community and it helps people that are mentally that struggle with mental health issues like if it's really going to do all that well i'm going to thank god every day that i didn't sit around in fear going well i mean ai is going to take over the whole world and enslave us well i got news for you there's human beings that were trying to do that too so who's worse the robot or the technology i don't know maybe who's training the robot but the fact is this, we don't have control anyway. So we got to live our lives doing the best that we can with what we have. And we have this information available to us of saying, hey, this is what the future is going to look like. Here's the skills that you need to have. And here's the actionable steps that you can take. Yes, your job's going to get taken. Yes, school teacher, your job's going to get taken. But you're going to have an opportunity to teach globally now. Hey, attorney, guess what? You're not going to be able to practice law anymore because we don't need stinking lawyers anymore. But guess what? There'll be opportunities for the attorney. Oh, doctor, guess what? You're not going to practice. You don't practice medicine anymore anyway. <laughs> but, um, you know, hey, the robots are now going to do surgery for you. So we don't really need you to do that. But guess what? There's going to be other opportunities available. Across the line, it's going to be this way. And the one thing... The other thing I want to say to you is this, for all the jobs that robots take or AI takes, it will never replace you as a human being. And as a human being, you were created by a creator who created you to create. You were created for a purpose. And that purpose doesn't go away because of technological advances. If anything, that it gives you a new way to use your gifts, talents, and purpose to do what you were created to do. So without getting too churchy or preachy with you all, this is an opportunity for you to do what God, the creator, created you to do. Now, if you don't believe in a creator, I don't I, I don't know how to have a conversation with you, except to say, I don't know where you came from, but anyway, moving on. <clears throat> All right. Developing critical thinking skills, some things to look at. Identify sources and evaluate credibility. That doesn't take long to do, by the way. Who's the author? Who's the author of the content? Look them up. Like if you're doubting what's being said, go look at some of their other predictions. One thing you want to do. Oh, by the way, this is the beauty thing, the beautiful thing about the Internet, because it's forever. The Internet's forever. Even when you thought you deleted something, it's forever. Well, it's maybe not a beautiful thing. <laughs> anyway, um, but um, you can go back and look at people's predictions. You can go back and go, oh, on CNN, on this week, that person said, or Fox, not going to you know throw just CNN under the bus here, but Fox, CNBC, MSNBC, on this date, they said this, but then the following week, they said something that contradicts that. And then, oh, the next week, they said something else. We have the ability to do that now. So, what, again, I'm not going to say names. Don't want to get in trouble <clears throat> or offend anyone. But these the leaders that we have in America have been doing that to us. Our politicians, and we keep voting them in. This has gone on as long as I've been alive, but we keep doing it. And now, more than ever, we have more disinformation and we have more changing of minds because we're trying to persuade people to do things that we want them to do. But what about you and what you want to do and what you feel is right for you? So when you have these hardcore decisions to make that dictate your ability to live your life, be around your family, be healthy or not, and so on, you should evaluate who you're taking advice from. And just because they have a large following doesn't mean you should take their advice. A fun little project for you to do, and it may make you ask some questions, but have you ever looked on IMDb, the internet movie database, and looked at looked up politician names? You should do that. You should do it just for fun. You should also look and see who the agents are of these politicians. RFK, Biden, Trump, on and on and on. All of them. All of them. Kamala Harris. Name a politician. Go look him up on IMDb. Go look who their agent is. It's not a coincidence. 
not a coincidence. So when we're taking advice from people, it's good to find out who the heck they actually are, especially if it's a news agency you've never heard of. Look at the body of the work. Look at the predictions. Heck, you can do it with profits too. Because how many times of the world was, how many times is the world, should the world have ended by now? <clears throat> anyway, I'll stop there. Uh, examine media messages purposes. Understanding the intentions, be intentions behind media messages helps us in uncovering biases and hidden agendas. Well-funded movements. I, I don't want to be too political. I'm going to stop. Okay. Analyze pers persuasion techniques. Scrutinizing methods used for persuasion aids in recognizing manipulation and enhancing decision-making skills. I purposely do not use NLP on you. I purposely, if you don't know what NLP, NLP, if you don't know what NLP is, um, it, it neuralistic language programming. In other words, programming your mind. Preachers do it. Motivational speakers do it. Everybody, every, like a lot of public speakers do it. Stand up, raise your hand, stand up, down, shout, say this, say this. Like it's all, these are all part of NLP and it goes much, much deeper. In fact, the new SEO requirements, by the way, factor in NLP. So <laughs> that's a, that's a three hour presentation, by the way, uh, just on NLP and SEO. But like when people are doing that to you, it could be habit, it could be their training, but be careful because sometimes things are said and the way that they're said and the way that the information is being delivered to you, it's meant to persuade you, to manipulate you. I purposefully do not speak that way because, well, I mean, look, I know it's effective and I know it helps make people money, but it's a dangerous trick that can be used in a negative way. Um, number four, consider multiple viewpoints. It Look, if you're going to watch the news, watch all of them, even though I don't really recommend watching the news because you'll be in, uninformed and more confused than ever. But life is confusing enough as it is, especially when we're looking at all of these other distractions. And, and I was saying that talk, I was leading to this earlier, but there's so much in life that we can't control. So maybe it's just best that we focus on what we can. That's our response. That's the actions that we take, the way that we treat people, what we do in our day in, day out lives. But consider multiple viewpoints because one, it's good to have different, if you're going to seek for answers, it's good to have multiple versions of those answers. So you, it'll, and it'll help you figure out what's really true or at least <laughs> what's more likely true, but it's not always for sure. Um, verify and fact check information. I wanna tell you something about this. Fact checkers are not really checking facts because that's one of those situations like Snopes. For so long, Snopes, S-N-O-P-S, S-N-O-P-E-S.com was a place that you could go look to see if information was real or not. It's not the case anymore. And to give you the examples I want to give you to prove my point, I wouldn't be invited back for course four. So I'm not going there. But they got bought out. It's not the same company. And the fact checkers that are on social media, by the way, you got to look at who's funding them. Where's that money coming from? Double blind placebo controlled studies for skincare, for cosmetics, for medical devices are not always accurate and not always true. People have a price. And so one of the things that I love about this new world and new economy is that us as independent voices, when we leave authentic and real reviews on Amazon and other platforms, well, it helps people make better educated decisions. It also holds the manufacturers accountable. And that's what we should be doing. 
Um, so you got to be careful with the fact checking websites. And you also want to make sure that they're not funded by at blue because they fund a lot of really awful things, but that's another conversation. All right. Building your own media company. So I said this before at the very beginning, um, your, most of your websites can be converted in where you can set it up, where you're hosting all of your own content. You can organize it into different categories. You can have multiple video categories. You can have your podcast. You can have a newsletter. You can have your books, self-hosted books, whatever you want. And we're going to show you that soon too. Um, your domain, I told you before, I think your your name, buyingyourname.com is one of the most important domains you can buy. But then obviously having a, don a unique domain name uh, for your business is also important. But I think your name is the most important. Um, and reliable hosting too. There's there's so many great companies out there, and you know, and I'm not I don't want to recommend just one, but typically if your website platform that you like, um, if they offer hosting, in my opinion, that that that's a good way to go, especially if it's a reputable company. Now, video content, um, I've mentioned this before. Video content serves multiple purposes. Video content becomes audio content, long form video, or even video, special video series, short videos, mini videos. They can be cut into clips, but your video content, like even this, this is turned into video content. Meaning, yes, I'm on video now as a webinar, but I've also taken the same information and I've turned it into a video broadcast where there's cut clips, and and then there's also a blog and I'm distributing that out as well. Why? Well, because now I can not only I gave I I gave this course for free. But the truth is and this is going out to all of you for free, but I can repurpose this content now and I can use it to market my book, actually market my books, movies, and other courses or whatever I want. You know, this can be video content is the most powerful because it gives you the most options. And on top of that, video content can open the door for other opportunities for you, like speaking, like representing brands. Um, we've talked about affiliate relationships before and the benefits of that. And we'll get into more of that later. But video content is is really the one that. Video content can go into your virtual worlds. Video content, of course, can go into your video platforms. If you self-host, it can go into YouTube and Rumble and Odyssey and Kit and wherever you want, right? And then you have your video clips. You can put on TikTok, put on Instagram. It's up to you. Monetization and revenue. Um, there's so many different forms of that. I mentioned Maestro. Maestro is an innovative way to monetize premium content. I don't I wouldn't recommend using Maestro for well, something like this. Now, if I was created like if it was a virtual experience, um if it was a it was more of a an event style, absolutely. If I was going to put my film up there, absolutely. Um or like say you have a show, like your broadcast kind of looks something like what Howard Stearns used to look like when he was broadcasting on TV um, or some of the other people that do when they broadcast or they're, they're going live on video, but also audio as well. One of the things that you can do with a platform like that is integrate your sponsors, really customize call to actions. You have your live chat. Um, where you can actually bring people on video to chat with you and bring them into the experience. There's so many really innovative ways to do that. Um, but everything that you see on the screen is monetizable. Everything, all of that's real estate for you to monetize. And really the proof of that is what the virtual worlds are becoming, like the metaverse. It's another area to monetize. And everything in that world becomes monetizable if you want. Um, marketing and promotion, I've, I've shared you with you before. I'm a firm believer in hosting your own content, like your full-length videos, your full-length podcasts, all of that. Save that for your platform and use 
clip generators for social media to, to help market, but make sure in your descriptions that you're leading people back to the your website, your web platform with all of the, making sure I'm okay on battery. Um, you want to make sure that you have all of your information in those clips so you can pull people back. Or even if you do a really creative post on social media, include your website link, Br bring people back to your website. Your call to action should always be back to your platform that you own, not to follow you on Instagram, not to follow you on Twitter. In fact, I don't even recommend giving multiple call to actions because the only call to action that matters are people coming back to your website whatever area in your website that you're trying to draw attention to, that should be the link that goes into your description. Because if you're counting on social media to get you where you want to go, I know on the surface, like, hey, I see this person, they've made a bunch of money. Odds are you're not it. Odds are you relying on social media to get you where you want to go. It may work in the short term, but that is not the long game plan that will work for you unless if you're one of the chosen ones, but there's a whole other conversation there I'm not getting into. Tools and platforms. All right, so video platforms, YouTube, Vimeo, DeCast, great platform, by the way. DeCast, you can self-host um, content on, you can live stream on, wonderful platform. It's more like a TV network. Those of you that want to do have an Apple TV, Roku, or Amazon Fire, um, if you want to be on those platforms, I'm not hating on it. Just because I have a philosophy of self-hosting. And I I mean, I was vice president of E360 TV. Still love them. Love the network. But the truth was, why would I go on E360 or Apple TV or Roku or Amazon Fire, which E360 is on those platforms, it's not like I'm going to be easy to be found there because all I've done is put myself into another box. And by the way, when you're on OT, when you have a TV show or a podcast on one of these streaming networks, you're not showing up in search engines. The only way that you show up in a search engine is if you take your embedded video player and then the transcript or a blog of your show and putting that on your website, and even you can include in podcasts too, but the only way that you're going to be found in a search engine or discovered organically is if you're publishing a blog with all of that content. So, but that doesn't help you on Apple TV. It doesn't help you on Amazon Fire because the same full big screen picture that I would go, oh, I'm on E360 TV, look. I look so much better on the big screen. There's not a single platform. Your website could be the big screen. You don't need E360 TV. You don't need the binge network. You don't need any of them. Because the money that you would spend on buying those platforms, paying for those platforms, paying for that technology, you could invest in marketing your own website where you keep all the money. And you increase your odds of being discovered. People are not seeking to find new content on these streaming networks unless if it's Netflix. And even if I was a creator and I had some and Netflix came to me and said, hey, we would love to, you know, launch your movie. I mean, would I consider it? Yeah, but I would do the math. And sometimes the math, it's like a record contract. I think of Master P. The record contract that people get, the million dollar signing bonus, they don't actually, that's not their money to keep. They pay it back. It's just to me, going on these other platforms that you don't own are not setting you up for success long term. This is my personal opinion and belief. Don't want to push it on you, but that's what I believe. I really believe that self hosting all of your intellectual property on one platform makes it much easier for you to monetize your life. Audio and podcasting platforms. Um, you can self-host with podcast. Um, absolutely. There's the technologies out there for that. Anchor's free. 
Um, I know that Buzzsprout and Libsyn gives you the opportunity to self-host your podcast and self-distribute and you can white label. Um, if for those of you who love more live style radio or, um, or live style podcast, Spreaker, S P R E A K E R.com is a great platform. In fact, um, there's a lot of monetization built in with that. They have a really good video radio player and they have a community where you can get discovered. So for some of you all, Spreaker may be a great option for you. I actually really like that platform um, and I do recommend it. But again, that's a platform that odds are I would get in trouble and I just don't want to, you know, be censored anymore. Okay. So if you're wanting to create an online magazine, writing, blog, there's Medium, Flipboard, WordPress, all that stuff is great. But there's a new, a platform I want to recommend to you is Ghost. If you're wanting to be more, if you're more of a writer and you want to create publications, highly recommend, um, uh, I, I, I highly recommend Ghost, but I'm going to show you something else really quick. Um, how do I do this? I'm going to stop sharing my screen real quick. How do I stop sharing my screen? Oh, stop sharing. Okay. So let me go back to this other platform. No. Share screen. Oh, is that it? I think that's it. Okay. So I want to show you um, this real quick. So wait, am I sharing the right screen? I can't. I hope I'm sharing the right screen. Can you all, can you tell me if you see a book on the screen that says flip HTML5? <laughs> can you all tell me if you see that? Just to make sure. Oh, you can't hear the lawn. That's good. Okay. Laura. Oh, you can hear. Okay, good. All right. So I, this is not updated. Don't judge me on the finished work yet. But so with Amazon, if any of you have ever published a book on Amazon, you know that they take a lot of your money and and, and they take a lot of it, your hard work. And I get it because, hey, they, they're going to market your book or they're going to make your book easier to find. And hey, everyone shops on Amazon. But if you self-publish and you go, even if you go exclusive with KDP, the odds of them promoting your book in a way that helps you become a bestseller organically on your own is really hard. In fact, you're probably going to get put on the 10th page of the search results unless if you have a really robust marketing platform or a marketing plan. And, I, and we can discuss that later. But the truth is, this whole concept that I'm teaching you is about owning your content, owning your intellectual property, um, you know, standing on your own, distributing your own content, using these other platforms as your marketing. So what I did was I finally found the right platform that would allow me to have a paywall, meaning on my website, where like it, 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 this specific platform I'm showing you has its own paywall to charge. Now you don't see the charge screen here. You can, but what this does is it allows me to customize the backdrop. Um, I can change books. I, all of the clickable links and I, I, this is not, this is not the live version. So you can't see me click the links here, but I can go in here and make all of this interactive. But the reason I'm showing you this in the book is because it's not just the fact that I can host this book on my own platform, but this means that anyone bu that buys the book, I don't have to split the money with for it. In other words, I'm not giving away 10%, I'm not giving away 20%, I'm not giving away 30%, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 70%, not even 1%. I'm keeping everything I make 
on this book when you buy it on my website. Now that's a win. It's a win to keep all of your money, right? Absolutely. So what that does is that allows me to lower the price of the book on my website. And the, you know what I did? I raised the price of the book on Amazon and all the other platforms because I don't want people buying from them. I want people buying, if they're going to buy my book, buy it directly from me. One, it's cheaper. It's less expensive. And well, selfishly, I get to keep more of the money. But here's the other part. This is a this is insight for you all. If you get someone to read your book on your website, what do you think the benefits of that are other than keeping your money? What happens, and you all can answer this question, what happens if you're scrolling on social media and you see a picture, you see an image, or you see a video and you stop and you watch it? How do you make money on YouTube? Watch time, right? Watch time, how long somebody spends on your platform. That means the algorithm is going to go, ooh, people really like that picture. People really like that video. And they sit there and they wait and they watch, right? So now imagine, we talked about this last week, give people a reason to want to spend time on your website. So host your books there. Lower the price. You don't have to sell it the same way you would on Barnes and Noble, on Amazon, and so on. You read the book, and oh, by the way, you can read this on your website. You can read this on your phone because it integrates with the phone, so it looks just like the Kindle. I'm not, what am I missing? And oh, by the way, I can publish endless amounts of books for $7 a month on this platform. Now, there's other features and stuff that you can get, but I don't know why anyone wouldn't want to do that. All right, so that I shared that with you. I'll stop. Um, how do I get out of this? We go back to the presentation now. We're almost done, ladies and gentlemen. Appreciate all of y'all's patience being with me here. We're going to get to your questions too. Okay. This new world, the new technology and everything else is set up for community building. Again, for all of the talk about all the advancements in technology and all of these things that are available for us, it makes it sound like we're going to merge with technology and go off into these virtual worlds and never leave. If you watch the, the Lawnmower Man enough, you might believe that because, well, that's what that movie made me think of. But again... <laughs> I think a little bit like what got me interested in all of this was probably nothing, you know, necessarily innocent. It was always the crazy weird stuff of like, oh, my gosh, we're going to get lost in virtual reality and we're never going to come out and we're going to be have our headsets on and never take them off and disappear from reality. Like, I mean, that that was a real thing. But 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 remember, this is about family. This is about community. This is about truth, attracting your tribe, truth breaking people in half because the blessings and the breaking, but the truth is going to hurt. It hurts, hurts all the time. Dealing with your own truth hurts. Accepting your own truth about yourself sometimes is a humbling, humbling thing, but that's okay because a humble message to a community can help a community heal. So for all the talk of technology in the end, this technology gets to be used to help us rebuild our communities in real life. Yes, we establish communities online, and we absolutely do that. The virtual worlds, you have Substack, MailChimp, ConvertKit, all these other platforms that allow you to do that. You can do the same thing on your own platform. Superpass, Ustream, all of that. Um, I keep looking down here because my computer's about to die. Um, but... <clears throat> It, this is all about building community. Your tribe is a community. It's not going to be hundreds of millions of people, most likely. It may be a million. It may be a hundred. Could be a thousand. Could be ten thousand. Could be fifty. 
50 people is a lot, really. You can do a lot with 50 people. You can do a lot with five. Don't sweat small beginnings. Humble beginnings is the word. Hold on. Okay. Oh, so I already went over the... I went over the ebooks. Um, Draft the Digital, Lulu, Amazon Direct. There's so many. The Penguin. Uh, Penguin Press. You guys have heard of Penguin Publishing? Penguin Publishing is awesome. Uh, they have a self-publishing option now. I highly recommend them. If you hear of an organization or you see an organization called Charles Dickens, run like the Dickens from them. Don't work with them. They're horrible. Horrible, horrible, horrible. I got to scoot this up. And they, they, uh, they, yeah, they, how do I say this nicely? They don't do what they say they're going to do. And um, it's rather disappointing. Okay, we're plugged in now. All right. Okay, so. I one of the other monetization methods is your merchandise. Now, you know, you may go, well, not everybody wants my merchandise. They may not want to buy something with just your logo on it because why in the world would they wear your logo unless if you're Prada or, you know, um, McDonald's. I'm, I'm making that up. I, I'm thinking of all the polo. Um, what was the alligator guy? Lacoste? Lacosta? like that alligator guy. Um, <laughs> but, you know, people may not want to wear that. So what I would recommend, like I created a merch store and I just put my logo on stuff just because I was just getting something there because I'm, again, was building my platform. I needed something there. But the next step that I do, the next evolution of my website that I'm changing now is actually the custom merch. And you know, creating merchandise that people would actually want to wear, not necessarily my logo, but like fun, cool stuff that, you know, people can use. I highly recommend when you, if you create merch to support what you're doing on your platform or independent media or your company, create something that people like, like that's different, that's unique, you know, and, and if it's, you're going to be basic, you know, maybe donate some money to a charity out of the profits. I don't know. But the thing is about the print on demand platforms, you cannot, you're not keeping a hundred percent of your money because you're using their, all of their stuff and they're allowing you to print on demand. So, you know, they have all the te the technology that they need, the equipment they need to be able to do this. So you're going to split the profits with them. Is it worth doing? Yeah, for sure. Because anyone who buys your merch, they're advertising for you. Now, some people are too busy staring at their phones to, you know, check out your T-shirt and look at the website or want to scan it. But every once in a while, you'll see one of those shirts or something that someone's wearing and going, that's unique. That's cool. Do the same thing. Exploring revenue streams for independent media enterprises not to say that accessibility and inclusion is a revenue stream not to minimize it or to say hey let's exploit the disabled no i'm not saying that at all because my i'm actually talking to the people that have not had accessibility and have not been included whether because of your your gender because of your race because of your mental health, because of your learning disability, because of your disability, because of your handicapped, whatever it may be, because of your sexuality. I, I keep forgetting I'm doing a webinar. I almost went into broadcast mode and went on a rant, but If you're part of one of the underserved communities or people that are not included or um, part one of the, like, say you're part of the gay or bi or 
trans community or, um, you know, your, your disabled your mental health issues. And you see some, or even maybe you're a minority from a race standpoint. You have all of these people in the media and social media that have big followings talking for you. And I know I talked about this a little bit before, but have you ever asked yourself, like, that's not how I, or have you ever said out loud, like, I don't feel that way. I mean, yeah, I'm a part of this community, but I don't align with that. And again, I don't want to single anything out, but some of these well-funded groups and these well-funded movements have like jumped the shark or whatever that expression is. They, they're using all of this money to take all these stands and say all these things, but none of it really represents what I believe or what I believe the reality is. Um, I, I'm trying to be careful, which is very hard for me to do. <laughs> so self-censoring is not my strong suit, but you know, People that are disabled don't want to hear, oh, you're disabled. Let me get that for you. Or, well, they are disabled, so this is what's best for them. That's what I look at as the media. That's what they do. And independent media is that person that is disabled going, uh, no, 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 no. I absolutely can do that on my own. I'm absolutely able to do that. I may need to use an assistive device to be able to accomplish that, but I can absolutely do it on my own. I don't need you telling people that I'm disabled. I don't need you telling people that I'm not capable because I am capable or whatever it is for you. Independent media gives you that right to have a voice. It gives you the soapbox to step on. But it also comes with great responsibility. But when you're standing up and you're sharing information from your perspective, especially the information that is not in the mainstream, that gives you a legitimate shot at success with new media or with independent media. So Monetization strategies, obviously digital advertising, native ads. One of the, if you're going to ever run an ad, um, believe it or not, Reddit is a great platform to run ads on. Um, the native ad company, I can't remember that name off the top of my head. Native ads work really well. There's, there's one ad that I don't think you want to do di digital advertising. If you go on Fiverr and you see like website marketing and they talk about, hey, we're going to promote your link to 190 million people or 500 million people. I'm going to save you some money. It's not worth doing because all they're doing is going on the Facebook group and the Facebook group will have 200,000 people in it. And they'll go to all of these Facebook groups with 200,000 people and they'll start posting your links in those places. But none of those places really have anything to do with what your content is. And none of those people that are in that group are actually going to go to your website because all those groups are for are for the people on Fiverr to market what they're doing to get you to pay for them to dump your link. But those links aren't helping you. If it was backlinking, on a high-ranking website, that would benefit you. But these these things where they post your link somewhere and you know say, hey, it's going to be seen by this many people, be careful with that. Uh, but there's all kinds of targeted ads. If you you know if you create a Google My Business account, one of the first things that you'll get with Google My Business or even Bing My Business is that they'll say, hey, we're going to give you five hundred dollars ad credit when you spend five hundred dollars. And here's, here's why they do that from my perspective. Most ads that you run, you have to be willing to burn or lose 50% of it because, um, because it even the best ad creators, there's, there's a filling out period. The AI is getting better. 
um, that improves this. But if you go hire an agency, uh, you have to be expected to burn through 50% of it. So that's why Google offers that because that's pretty standard. Affiliate marketing. You as an individual can create affiliates for what you create. Book, if you write a book, you can have affiliates. So you can, when you're advertising your book or you have people that love your book and they want to promote it for you, you can give them an affiliate link where they can make money off promoting you. That works great. And if you have a web platform that offers coaching, that offers courses, other video content, things of value, books, and so on, the whole thing can be an affiliate program. Starting affiliate programs are awesome, but only if you're willing to market it. So in the same way, if you're hiring employees, this is how you have to treat it, in my opinion. You can't just hire employees and expect them to figure out how to sell your product on their own. I mean, some people are just naturally gifted and they can do that. But what I want to say to you is if you start an affiliate program to promote what you're doing, to help bring in extra money and have a bunch of sales reps, essentially creating content for you, talking about your services, talking about your book, talking about this, talking about that, whatever it is for you, you want to make sure that you've trained them and you've worked with them and you've shown them how it's done. You, 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 they need to be an extension of you. So if you're not willing to spend the time with your affiliates and have a dedicated affiliate manager, if it's not you, don't do it. It's not worth it because it, they're not going to just find it unless you have a buttload of traffic, web traffic on your own. So, you know, affiliate programs work, but you got to work it. You got to treat it like they're your sales reps. So work with them. Um, sponsored content, create sponsored articles, videos, and posts that seamlessly integrate promotional messaging to engage audiences while monetizing content. If you're asking yourself, well, how do I get someone to sponsor content? Let's go back to affiliate marketing. Remember what I told you? I don't have any of my products around here. Um, I'm trying not to be self-promotional, <laughs> which is hard to do when I'm the businessman. Anyway, um, but affiliate programs for yourself. Like if you're like, I don't have any sponsors, but you know, and like you're, you, and you're looking at other shows and other podcasts and other people that have, they're doing sponsored content. And you're like, oh, I want to do that. Well, affiliate programs is a great gateway because any affiliate you sign up for, say it's a supplement that you love or a hair product uh, or a I remember razors, like there's a razor that you love. Um, you can, like, you, odds are they have an affiliate program and then you create content for that, con for that affiliate. So you love a racer or this pen, I'm not going to sell you a pen, but you know, you, th like this pen's an affiliate program. So I'm going to create a video. I'm talking about the pen and how it just glides over the paper and I can write so smooth and it doesn't feel like I'm have nails on a chalkboard when I write and, you know, and like, oh, and there's my affiliate rank if you want this special pin. So you have that on video. And I wasn't really trying to take that too serious. So don't judge me. And I wasn't auditioning either. But when you create a video like that and you do it professionally for that affiliate, what that's also done for you is giving you a proof of concept. So now you have somebody that you want to sponsor your your content your video maybe you're doing something on addiction and you want a rehab facility to promote you or to sponsor your video will you or the content you show them your previous work and how you represented those brands how did you do you have a proof of concept you know obviously having a following a large following all of that stuff works but here's something else if you don't have a large following that would work for you, you can, if you want someone to sponsor you, maybe you don't even have an affiliate relationship, but you just like that brand product, whatever it may be, go ahead and shoot a video for yourself or write up a blog, write up a review for them and send it to them. Because honestly, 
even if it's not on your own platform, but if they share you on their platform or they share your blog or your review, especially if they backlink your website, that serves you probably more good than if you actually posted that video on your own platform. So there's ways to work around not having a following. Because if someone likes the video or the content that you create for them and you do it in good faith because your goal is to be a QVC host or to be a spokesperson of a brand or a product, you show that proof of concept, you show the portfolio of your work, portfolio of your work, you increase your chances. I know a lot of people have done that with YouTube videos to get their YouTube videos to blow up. Um, but there's some unique things that you could do around that. And we're running out of time. Jeez. Memberships and subscriptions. You can have a membership for videos, membership for books, membership for coaching, membership for um, consulting services, subscriptions, subscriptions, memberships, kind of like an interchangeable word, word. But either way, you can do that. And these platforms like Dutta, like Superpass, like Ustream, Shopify, I think even, you can set up memberships and subscriptions. You could, you could write a book, self-host a book and charge 99 cents a month to access it if you wanted. And if you have somebody, if you have a book, you can charge whatever you want. But if you have something like that, especially like a reference manual, that wouldn't be a bad option. And no one's offended about paying a dollar, are they? I don't know. E-commerce and online stores. You know, a lot of the website platforms have it built in. Sometimes you have to pay a little extra to have this option. But having e-commerce and e uh, online stores, there is a bunch of money to be made here because you can sell other people's products on here. Um, and there's a lot of really like drop shipping. Drop shipping is a great thing to do uh, for earning money. And sometimes like if, if people, you think people may not want to buy your product, but they would buy someone else's, you can, you can take a drop shipping strategy or an affiliate strategy to be a revenue stream for you where you're just promoting other people's con uh, products. Promoting other people's product, there's no shame in that. I, again, believe in promoting what you own, but doesn't mean that you do that right out the jump unless if you are just prepared to do it. You know, ideally, it'd be great if we could all start with a clean slate, build our media companies, and then start going forward at the same time. But it doesn't work that way because you all have kids, you have jobs, you have commitments. So you can do this slowly, piece by piece. The reason why I do recommend my book always is because it allows you to go step by step and do it at your own pace. You can go as fast as you want. You can go as quick as you want. I, fast and quick. Or you can go as slow as you want. Sorry. The importance of accessibility. Kind of like, listen, I'm white. Love being white. I have no issue be, being white. But at the same time, I think it's about time we started celebrating and learning about other cultures and, um, you know, and hearing other voices. I don't care. You know, like for a while in acting, they quit looking for white people for commercials. They wanted more diverse looks. And you know what? Don't blame them. Not even mad about it. Because getting to act and do commercials and all that stuff is just like icing on the cake. It's a blessing. It's a gift to get to do that. So I want other people to experience it. I encourage all of you to go for it. You can go to, you don't even need an agent. You can go to allcasting.com and see opportunities for you. They hire all kinds of models for all kinds of things. Commercials, whether you have experience or not. There's agents that will, you can you can get agents in Minnesota, especially, that don't cost you money. So anyway, uh, ensuring representation, capturing a diverse range of voices to reflect various perspectives and experiences within the media. We all come from different places. You know, we grew up in different neighborhoods, different cities, different towns, around different voices, different cultures. Like all of that shaped who we are. And being in an echo chamber where everyone agrees with you does nothing productive for your life except give you this false sense of reality. 
I, I encourage you to break out of your echo chamber and seek different perspectives. Even if it offends you a little, because you can ask yourself, why am I being offended by this? And asking yourself that question, why am I offended by this? Why am I appalled at this? Really even spending time with that question will reveal a lot more than you think. Encouraging inclusiveness, promoting accessibility and media content creation to cater to wider audience and foster inclusivity. I told you uh, last week that the websites, they're going to, there's going to be some accessibility rules put in place. So, because there's a lot of web platforms, like for instance, when the bl somebody that's blind comes to your platform, if you have not written out the description of that image and there's on your website searching, like it, their websites will speak to them and tell them what is there, like what they're looking at or you know what is on the screen and if you're you haven't done that one minor step by naming your images who are you helping you're helping only the people that can see but the people that can't you're excluding and blind people deserve to be heard too blind people deserve to know what's going on and so we have these technologies that will read the screen what were what other people could see, but we, you know, the blind person cannot, and it helps them navigate your website, navigate your content, find out about your services. And while this has been overlooked for a long time, it shouldn't be. There's all kinds of different ways that um, we can adapt websites to make them more inclusive for people. Adding different diverse perspectives, we've kind of gone over that a bunch. Mm. All right, so here's some successful independent media initiatives. I do highly recommend checking these out. OK Africa emphasizes African politics, culture, and social issues, contributing to a diverse media landscape. Great web platform, whether you're in Africa or not, doesn't matter. Uh, definitely worth checking this out. Again, different perspectives because our perspectives here in America are going to be different than Africa. And by the way, there's a lot of different perspectives in Africa. It doesn't mean what there. It doesn't mean anyone's perspective is more right than the other. But it's a great way to see. And frankly, if you want to be inspired, look at what people do in Africa to get their content made. How people put together instruments from just household goods and trash and other things, and they can make beautiful, sweet music. Talking about being a good steward, talking about being grateful for what you have and not what focusing on what you don't. Like what takes place in what, you know, many have considered third world countries, and maybe some still are, but the fact is those people that have dreams and they have visions and they and they have a belief of a better life and they have a dream of being on stage and speaking or hearing having the world hear their music or having people hear their testimony or having people read their book. You want to get inspired, look at what's happening in other countries besides America. And it will also wake you up to the fact how far other countries are ahead of us in America when it comes to media literacy and adapting to the tools that are available. Rappler, web-based news organization known for fearless reporting on human rights abuses and disinformation, setting a standard for investigative journalism. I remember when Vice used to be like that. Bellingcat, investigators and citizen journalists leveraging open source intelligence, revolutionizing the approach to fact-checking and data analysis, another good platform to check out. The Quint, focused on fact-based reporting and presenting diverse viewpoints, promoting transparency and journalistic integrity. These are great platforms to check out so you can see how they've done it. It's great. One of the upcoming mini trends, I can't read that because I barely uh, speak English, but this is here for a reason. America has been the face of media, TV, music, film. Like when you think of media, people think of America. 
Hollywood, as Hollywood goes, the world goes. So many people have said it before. But the reality is that while we were, you know, kind of taking, we, we've had, we have the fast internet. We've got all the technology. We've got access to everything we want. Clean water for the most part. We have, you know, I mean, our poor people are rich compared to other people in third world countries, right? But if you think about it, think about fiber and upwork. Think about where the people are from that we said, hey, can you create this graphic art for me? Hey, can you edit this video for me? Hey, can you convert this into a blog? Hey, can you um, change the keywords out to my book? Can you get me an Amazon bestseller? Can you publish this for me? Can you um, write this for me? Whatever the task was, can you change the coding of my website? All of these tasks that we were giving to people and paying pennies on the dollar. What do you think you were doing? They were doing your work for you, right? Every one of those skills that we were paying for other people to do for us, well, now we have the tools that we don't need to hire people, right? We don't need to because I can go to AI and I can do a lot of that. So there's not a need to hire them. But, but all of them that we hired, we were training kind of like our social media and our internet history and our emails and our blogs. We're training AI, our, our conversations with Siri. Okay, I was making sure it didn't pop up. Uh, conversations with that person or lady i think series lady anyway we're training we trained the third world countries that were doing all of our schlep work but that schlep work as i like to call it, the work that is really not all that enjoyable to do was teaching them and training them how to build their own organizations there's a reason why now in india in 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 Bangladesh and other in 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 the other parts of the Middle East, um, you're seeing a, a uh, uh, where you've seen a lot of people now host podcasts and create successful ones. There's more voices internationally being heard now than ever before. There's podcast networks that exclusively host in Europe only or Middle East or Africa only. And by the way, you can get your podcast on those platforms if you use the right hosting platform or you know how to submit. But other voices are rising and they're doing it in an excellent way. And guess what? Those same people that we hired out to do all that other work for us, create cover art and other things, that they're now doing their own media and have their own podcast and TV shows and media networks, they're not hiring other people to do that work for them because we train them how to do it. And since we train them how to do it, now they know how to talk to AI to tell, to tell AI how to do it properly. So all of these foundational steps that I've provided for you in the previous two courses and now this one, all of them are like there, these are foundational steps that are important for you to know so that you can approach this in a, in, in a way that will set you up for success instead of helping you fail. Because the foundational pieces are important to know and they know them. It, to me, it's exciting because more diverse stories will be heard. You want to hear inspiring stories? Hear about the person that dreamed of having a band but they didn't have musical instruments. So they took stuff they could find in their community and trash and other things, put together a band. And now they're recording videos and they're going viral on YouTube and other platforms that happens. It's, it's inspiring to me. And it makes me never want to complain about what I don't have. The emergency, the emerging technologies and trends, um, of internet of the integration of AI, the internet of things, robotics. 
In, oh, I want to encourage you also. There's great learning, free courses on LinkedIn. LinkedIn learning is a really valuable place to learn, and you can take deeper dives in these trainings, and you can learn about how to what the Internet of Things and how it will work for you, how it will benefit. There's a deeper dive on every one of these subjects. My book takes a deeper dive on all of it. But there's other trainings available. This is surface-level knowledge, hopefully, to inspire you to go take action and realize what's possible for you. Immersive experiences with VR and AR. I mentioned Maestro, amazing platform. The other ones, I mentioned the Web3, Sp Spatial, great platform to check out. Um, arrival space, amazing. Data-driven journalism. Utilizing data analytics to uncover insights, trends, and enhance reporting accuracy. You can fact check everything. You can dive into the data. You can prove things so much easier. You can verify information so much easier now because you can literally plug in a news article on Copilot and ask on Copilot for supporting documentation to support the link of this, the, the, the link that you're reading. Is this real? Is this information? If you're doing research to present your own article, it will help you prepare that. It'll help you get all the statistics that you need are invaluable. Personalization and content customization. You can get wild with this. You can ask for ideas from chatbots, but there's nothing better than using your own stories, your own lessons in life, the things that you've learned, and offering that. And if you don't know how to particularly shape that in a way that would be friendly for other audiences, you can have AI help you. Claude, Claude AI is one of the best human communicating AIs I've used. And it, it can really help make your content crystal clear and easy to understand, but also help you find the specific things that you need to set or, you know, the, the proper title. Um, it can take your ideas and say, well, if you word it this way, it's going to help it get seen by more people. You can use that. It's still personal. It's still custom, but you can utilize AI to help shape that for you so it's more successful or to drum up more ideas or to take a deeper dive. The blockchain for rights management. So one of the things that I'm really excited about is getting ready to take my platform onto the blockchain. Everything's done in pieces. And while I'm telling you all of this information and I've been teaching all of this, I look, I've only been able to apply so much. I've got more than most people on my platform. I have two virtual worlds, podcasts, six different categories of broadcast, I have books and <laughs> other services and things and other content. Um, but I only have a piece of what I'm doing because I can only do with what I have doesn't mean I didn't go learn how to do those things. Like the information I've been learning for a long time, I never stop learning. I learn something every day. But as far as applying what I learned, sometimes if you can't pay for the piece of technology, then you don't use it. So the next integration I go is the blockchain, which is going to be happening over the next few weeks. Super excited about it because of what I have planned. And this is available for all all of you, some of these platforms, again, you can get on for free. doesn't cost you any money. But with what I want to do with blockchain, it's going to cost some money. That's why I'm not using it. All right. So if, what questions do you all have? Any insights? What have you learned? What questions? What would you like further clarification on? Right now, This the questions are for you. I will go as long as they're questions. I'll answer anything that you have. Um, I want to go through this really quick, give you time to ask questions. Um, let's see, insights into building your own media, independent media company in the fourth industrial revolution. I mean, all of this speaks for itself. There's no point in me repeating any of this. You can see it. Um, but there is a real opportunity here for all of us. And especially for those who don't think there's an opportunity, <laughs> there's an opportunity for you. But also, I want to encourage you, if you have an existing business, um, if you already have an existing business, it won't take much for you to become a media-first organization. And even though the focus wasn't on that 
for the these these classes i want to encourage you that if you have questions about your existing business and how to you know really take it into independent media and utilizing the media tools and you don't even have to call it independent media but you just want to take advantage of the tools and learn how you can add new revenue streams onto what you're already doing without spending an extra dime well that's possible and you can message me and I can help you with that. Because I want to make this clear. If you have an existing business, all that I've been teaching the last three weeks is way easier, way easier. But this was specifically for people who struggle with accessibility, um, inclusion, um, they're worried that they're going to lose their job, they lost their job, can't get a job, can't find a job can't get a job because of their prison record or their mental illness or the disability. That's who the, I, again, I mentioned this before, but this is who I created it for. So this is for you. All right. I'm going to go through questions here. Okay. Start at the beginning. I shared last week's presentation. We can't see the others <laughs> preach. <laughs> oh, you couldn't hear the lawn noise. That's good too. Um, what's this book platform? It's HTML. Hold on, let me pull it up. It's H flip. It's flip HTML5. It's amazing because it's not expensive. I went through, I've been looking for months, JJ, and I finally found the right solution that would have a paywall. Because some of the other platforms like Publu which is P U B L U U. It's the cool, it's, it's great, but you can't put the content behind a paywall. And that's why I didn't use them. This was the only one, the only platform with my existing website that allowed me um, to plug it in and it just did it automatically. It was set up. So check that out. Like the log drum in South African M uh, piano used by Tyla. I like I like Tyla. By the way, <laughs> we should listen to her music now. All right, no questions. Okay, y'all. Um, oh, increased traffic and in advertising. I don't know what you mean, Jose. By that, is that what you're wanting to do? Oh, so <clears throat> I actually had this conversation with someone else yesterday with the increased traffic. If you want to increase traffic. You got to quit sharing your premium content on free platforms. If you create premium content, don't put it on YouTube. Don't put it on Muse. Well, no, put it on Muse because you can monetize Muse and you can keep your money on Muse. But don't put it on Instagram. Don't put it on Twitter. Even if you're monetized on those platforms, you're not going to get paid what you're worth. So what you do is with for if you want web traffic keep your premium content there and then cut clips of that and use that for social media as i was talking before you put the link in for your website your platform or to the main source of content and you're using that to market and then embedding your links on seo friendly websites we talked about this last week reddit is an SEO friendly platform, Flipboard, Medium, LinkedIn, those newsletters. They're great. They're great advertising tools for your website. Let's see, there's another question here. I don't understand the YouTube example you gave about how the algorithms work, such as the longer one stays on one page, the more it registers. Oh, so what? I, okay, that's a great question. Um, so if I'm hovering, so like I'm right now, I'm on your questions. I'm, I'm going to pretend I'm on Facebook and I've got the Q&A screen up here. If I'm on Facebook or YouTube, the longer I'm watching the video or longer I'm watching the content, the more it helps that person that hosted the content. So they'll give you a view if you're on there for three seconds or four seconds, right? That will count as a view. But if someone only watches for three or four seconds, that doesn't really do anyone any good. Uh, so the idea is 
the longer someone's watching what you're doing, the longer someone's on your website platform, the better it's going to do for you. So having by having your book on a book page on your website and people are reading it there, Google, the search engines are going to go like, wow, his drop rate or the people that are coming to this website, they're coming here and they're spending an hour. They're spending 10 minutes. They're spending 30 minutes. Heck, if someone spends six minutes, that's pretty dadgum good. So you don't have to, the idea is to keep people on your platform and keep them happy there. And they, and you want them to hang out there. Yes, it favors you on YouTube. Yes, it favors you on Twitter or X and Facebook and all the other platforms. But where it really benefits you is your website because you own your platform. So give people a reason to want to hang out, stay, and watch what you're doing. So that's why, like when you put together, say you're going to put together, you, you do a broadcast or a podcast. So you put the video, the transcript or a blog, and then the audio. The purpose behind that is, one, it's a bunch of different ways that you can get discovered because you index videos. Those are discoverable. The print is discoverable. And audio SEO, I've heard that that's a thing. And then I don't know. It, it's supposed to be, but I don't know if it is or not. But I know the video and the transcript is. So you want people reading what the video is going to be about. So that would keep them there. That's more time there. And then, you, of course, you want them to watch the video. So because that gives more time. However, that's tricky because we live in a world now where if you're watching your favorite Netflix show, odds are you're also scrolling on social media. So your attention struggling, right? So with a book, a book has a great way, in my opinion, of getting people to spend more time on your platform, which will bring you more money and more web traffic because they're there and they're visually entertained they're immersed in the content and there's no reason to leave. Does that make sense? I'll stick around to make sure there's no other questions. And as I said before, um, okay, Alex, I'll answer your question. Um, social media marketing, I'm looking for free courses on that. Well, I, I, I actually am not on social media and, um, you, you market your, there's, there's a lot of ways that you can market your social media. Um, you can, you, I mean, you build your following. There's a lot of weird techniques, you know, the whole, you go follow a bunch of people and then you <laughs> go comment on all their stuff and then you unfollow, like you can do that method, but how productive is that? And Alex, why in the world would you want to build something that you don't own? You don't own social media. You don't own anything on there. And Alex, if I think you're who I'm talking to, you're the musician. You're giving away all of your intellectual property. I've seen your website. I hope I'm talking to the right person. I'm going to feel really silly. <laughs> okay, I'm glad I answered your question, Tom. Um, but Alex, you're a talented musician. And you, on social media, you're going to throw away a lot of your intellectual property. And if you're not sending people back to really your platform, and by the way, on your website, you have all of the foundational pieces that you need to create a revenue-generating, money-making website. So looking to grow on social media, I mean, that takes effort. But you're putting a lot of effort into something that may not be there in a six months or a year because you could get kicked off your platform. You could get hacked. Um, there's all kinds of stuff that could happen. And there's no insurance policy for you. So if you want to spend money and all of that to market social media, go on. There's all kinds of YouTube videos that will teach you marketing on social media. And then they're going to also offer you a click funnel to get into. So do that. But I would never advise that ever. 
Oh, you're a graphic designer. Sorry. Wrong preaching. <laughs> okay. So you're a graphic designer for a pet boutique. Um, and you're wanting to market that on social media? Interesting. Well, there's free courses. Uh, th there's stuff on YouTube that you can get. But again, I'm not fundamentally, principally, and all that other words I can't even think of. I'm adamantly against that. And that's just a personal thing. Um, but I'm sure you're pretty safe doing that on social media and you don't have the same fears or same reasons to fear um, as other people. But um, so I'm sorry, I can't be more help. I'm not a social media guru by any means. So sorry about that. Okay. All right, you guys. Well, thank you so much for your time. Um, what is course four? Let me tell you what course four is going to be. And odds are I may add and change stuff in it too. Um, let me tell you all really quick so you know what to expect. And here we go. What is this one going to be? Ah, so This is going to be getting more into the complex and ever-changing middle digital media ecosystem. There's going to be strategies for forming strategic partnerships, adapting to the technological advancements, and also regulatory changes, staying agile and relevant in this dynamic environment. So it'll be more strategies, other things like that. Hopefully, um, that it's it's going to be beneficial. It's just going to work. Yes, some of the stuff will be repeated in some way, but there's also going to be new insights. And also, because it seems like every week there's a new advancement, anything that's updated and relevant, we're absolutely going to touch on that. I'm absolutely um, going to cover that. So like I won't even create the presentation until a couple of days before because I want to have as much new stuff as possible. Make sure that you all have no questions. Okay. Do not forget to share the recording soon. I had many interruptions, so I'd like to catch up with the recording. Of course, Jose. All right. Yeah. So on my website, um, I shared in the chat at the very beginning, those of you who saw it, but in the chat below, there's two links from the first two courses, and you can expect to have course three up tomorrow. The PowerPoint will be there. The video will be there, um, and there'll also be an overview. So that'll all be there. And as always, if you have questions, you can reach out to me directly. Super grateful for your time. I know we went 10 minutes over, but um, I'm grateful for you all being here. And uh, let's see. Well, thank you, and Tom. I really appreciate you, brother. Um, love to you guys. Thank you. It means a lot that you're here. And, um, and it's, oh, oh, I do want to throw this out here since you guys are still hanging on. If you have other things that you want to learn or that you would like me to put into the presentation for next week, you guys can contact me. Like, just go to my website and contact me. Say, hey, I want you to talk about this. Um, if it's SEO strategies, if you want me to incorporate that, um, any of that other stuff, just let me know. I'm more than happy to customize it. I don't need to stay on script at all. And not that I ever do anyway but I've changed the presentation already. Like presentation two and three were different than what I intended. And so I'm happy to change this one too, because I want you to get the most out of your time. I'm so grateful for your time and um, just grateful for the support. So I'm here for you all. I'm excited for you all. Thank you for being a part of this and blessings to all of you. Bye-bye. Thank you, JJ. Thank you, Jose. My, my. Ah, there you are, my, my. Thank you, my, my. By the way, y'all, for real, network with each other. I didn't know my was here. Y'all, seriously, my and Tom, Jose, I haven't met you, JJ, I don't think. Amazing. Alex, thank you for being here. Um, you all, like, connect and network with each other because I think that you guys can collaborate and do some cool stuff. And prime example is my mind. What my my is doing in the community is so inspiring to me. Um, I know Intom, Intom Choku is his like what he's doing, not just with other underserved communities, but his other business ventures. So inspiring. Jose, his heart for kids and education is inspiring. And Jose is he's not in Minnesota, 
but he is brilliant, 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 brilliant. There are so many smart people here that get it. So don't waste the opportunity to connect with each other because there's some real things that you can do together in the world with this group. I don't think it's an accident, the people that are here that are here. So I'm supposed to be ending this and I'm not. You can't see the other attendants? Okay, if you want the list, I don't know how to do that. I'm gonna figure this out to get the list. Okay, I'm done now. Wait, I can just stop recording.